Hello, welcome to Advance, the UCSF system that supports the academic review process. In this module, I will describe the structure of the Advanced CV, describe the pros and cons of the CV's rich text fields, show you how to import into individual sections of the CV, show you how to select items to include in the significant publication section, and show you how to copy your CV into your academic review packet. The advanced CV structure follows the UCSF CV guidelines developed by the Academic Senate Committee on Academic Personnel. This structure is designed to facilitate academic review. If we roll over the headers, we can see that there is some informational text that will help us understand what goes into each of the sections. If we click on the edit link that's next to each of the headers, it will open an edit window with some tools to allow us to change the information that's in that section. This type of section is in a table, and therefore you have to open a second edit in order to open the, uh, that particular line for editing. The Done button will save whatever you've changed within this section. You won't save the information to the server until you click either the Save button or the Save and Exit button. The tools on the right, the Plus button, will add another line. The X button will remove whatever line you've clicked on. And then the Up and Down buttons are used to reorganize the information. You'll notice on the left that there's a checkbox. We check these in order to tell the system which items to include with the NIH Biosketch. If we go to the top, on the right hand side is a shortcut link. The shortcut link opens a small window that has every header within the CV and is designed to push you to that header. But also you'll notice on the shortcut that there are green check marks next to some of the headers. This indicates that these headers contain information that can be pushed to the NIH Biosketch. If we go to the grant section, the edit window looks a little bit different. It has the same buttons, but it has an extra button here that allows you to make a copy of this particular grant and push it down into the Pass Grants section. This is a tool to facilitate moving grants from pending to current and from current to past. You'll also notice that some fields, the block text fields particularly, have a toolbar at the top. These are rich text fields. These fields were included to enable you to modify the text within these sections using bold, italics, underline, and special characters. Each of the block text fields are rich text, as are the fields within the publication section, and they all have this kind of toolbar at the top. However, the decision has proved to be a two-edged sword. On the one hand, you have ultimate flexibility to modify the text as you want. On the other hand, pasting information from a website will include hidden formatting text from that website. This has proved to be the biggest issue encountered by users. The code from the website may include information about where the text should appear in, in a website which may conflict with the requirements within advance, causing issues with how the text is displayed. Also, the code may force the text to appear in a table that obscures functional buttons that disable the ability for the user to change the text. So be very careful when pasting information into these fields. For those who are so inclined, there is a source button at the top that allows you to see the HTML tags and, and perhaps fix the issues that may be encountered. If you find that an entire section of your CV needs to be replaced, for example, in this uh, CV, we can see that this particular section, peer-reviewed publications, appears in the wrong typeface, whereas the CV requires Arial 11 point, the typeface in this section appears to be Times. I could go into each individual field and modify the text, or I can use the import function to import a partial CV. When I click on the Upload Partial CV, I can see all of the different headers 
and I can select only the section that I'm interested in overwriting, find my CV, and when I import it, it will only import that one section. So now you can see that this particular section has the same typeface as the rest of the CV. Another use for the partial CV import would be if on your initial import a lot of text goes into one particular section. For example, if this peer-reviewed publication section included not only peer-reviewed publications, but review articles, books and chapters, and other publications, you could export this entire section or the entire CV and then put the correct headers in to separate out the review articles, books and chapters, and other publications. And then do an import only into those four sections without touching the rest of the CV. The import process does not import significant publications. So you can see that with this import, the significant publication section is blank. We recommend that uh, significant publications be added by clicking on the peer reviewed publication section and then selecting the star button to add publications to the significant publication section. So now we can scroll down to the significant publication section and see that there are significant publications, the three that I selected from peer-reviewed publications. I can open up this edit window and I can now add my contribution role. When you have your CV in a format that you feel is good enough for the academic review, you go to the My Packet tab you click on CV, and here you're given some text about what your role is and uh, the uh, links to the various academic personnel manual sections related to academic review. Click the checkbox saying that you have read these or you're at least aware of them, and then click copy. The CV is then added to your packet. The packet CV is a snapshot of your CV data, so you can continue to work with the My CV data. The changes will not appear in the packet CV until you copy a new version of the CV into the packet. This is to ensure that all reviewers of your uh, CV are looking at the same data. You'll also notice that there are some filters on the packet CV. This is, these are there to enable you to see what the reviewer will see. If your review period is two years, you may want to look at the CV with a filter of two years on. And then you may want to go back and modify your My CV so that you more accurately reflect your accomplishments over the last two years. As you modify the data in my CV, and if it's before the review period has started in your department, you want to go back to my packet, go to the bottom, or click on CV, and go to the very bottom of the CV so that you can make another copy of your my CV data into your packet. As you work with the edit features in advance, remember to ask for help before you get frustrated. Contact the person named at the bottom of your advance pages, send an email to advanceproject at ucsf.edu, or click the blue question mark button to get to the help documents. Remember that you can import into individual sections of the CV, and it's easier than it seems. Good luck!